is there like a, a income level or asset level that that you look at from the standpoint of people living longer, et cetera? I mean, when well, you I mean, if you if you look at the data, you see that those who are in the top 10th percentile of income, social security earnings. Um, and, and what is the top 10th percentile? Well, probably people who on average make above 80 or $90,000 a year. But that okay. doesn't sound rich, but it's, it's the reality. It and is. Um, those are the people who have gained the most in terms of longevity over the last couple of decades, as much as five years for men. Now, men have actually made the biggest gains in longevity because they're not doing as many stupid things as they did back in the 1960s and 1970s. They're not smoking as much. They're exercising more. You know, they're, they're actually taking care of themselves, which means that they've got more years in retirement, which, which means that that benefit from delayed claiming is going to be greater for them. Mm hmm I mean, that, I find that interesting because that also leads into if, if they happen to means test Social Security in the, in the future, how are they going to do that? Now, there's arguments that they already do that, but I'm talking about, you know, really kind of wiping out some people at the higher level that don't really need the income, even though they've paid in. Do you have any insight into that? Uh, because that's a, I hear that a lot from, from people that are my clients or people that call me that are, that are thinking about becoming clients. They're worried about that. They're worried about being cut out, even though they've scrimped and saved and and now they're at these asset levels that the, the somebody in the government might in the future deem them rich enough to be means tested out. Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I think that we're probably going to see increasing means testing among retirees. Uh, you know, the government has some revenue issues that's going to have to get worked out in the future somehow. Um, you know, that. I don't see it happening. Uh, I don't see taxes going up for Social Security recipients. We've already seen some reduction or increase in costs for Medicare recipients who have higher incomes. It's also a good argument to pay close attention to how much taxable income you're generating in retirement. In other words, paying attention to mm -hmm. taking advantage of Roth conversions when you can. And that's actually another benefit of delaying Social Security is that you can start pulling money out of your qualified retirement accounts, like your, your IRAs, uh, you know, what were originally your 401ks, you can bridge your spending by pulling money out of that account where you're forced to, after required minimum distributions start kicking in, you're, you're forced to take money out of that account. You have to pay income taxes on it. And if means testing becomes a bigger issue, then you're kind of locked in. Uh, and if you look at the way those RMD rules work, you know, the amount of money that you're pulling out, actually, you, you could keep pushing yourself into a higher income tax bracket to the point where by the time you reach your late 80s, you're actually in a higher bracket than you were at age 72. Um, that's a source of risk. And one way to reduce that source of risk is, is by changing the account allocation that you have to reduce tax risk. So you can, if you've got money in a Roth account, you can pull money out, no income taxes, um, you can have greater control over the amount of taxable income you generate. And, and this is probably a good point to also, or a good time to also point out that if you buy a non-qualified annuity, in other words, if you have money sitting in a taxable account, mm -hmm. so you've got money sitting in, in a checking account or a money market account, or even in an investment account, and you buy a lifetime income with taxable dollars, only a portion of that income is actually subject to income taxation because of what's known as an exclusion ratio. Mm -hmm. So if you buy one, it may be that only a quarter of it is actually, especially in a low interest rate environment, a smaller percentage of your payment is subject to taxation because that's the percentage that's considered to be interest. Um, and that's that can actually be a very, you know, it's, it's a tax advantage that a lot of people don't really talk about, including mm -hmm. the deferral benefit that you get from it until you sure. turn the income on. But it's a way of controlling taxes in retirement as well. And and Stan speak exclusionary show means you're getting uh, any type of lifetime income or income from an annuity is a combination of return of principal plus interest in a non IRA account. You're not going to pay taxes on the principal. You're going to pay taxes on the interest, which IE means exclusion ratio. That's what Michael was talking about. I think w one of the things that jumped out at me, and I did not know this, and maybe I should, was that the social social security has its own mortality tables. Um, that are probably different and unique from life insurance. Is that true? And, and explain why, that, why that's important. 
It's important because a lot of these formulas, like the benefit that you receive from delayed claiming, are partially dependent on what Social Security estimates is a fair amount of extra income to give you if you delay claiming. And the Social Security average, I mean, that's everybody. So, you know, that's, you've seen your fellow Americans, the, the average American is perhaps different than you. I don't want to, I mean, it's, it's, if you are the kind of person who, who makes sure that they exercise a certain number of times per week, who goes to Whole Foods, you know, who, who takes care of themselves physically, you're in a different, what's known as a mortality pool. And that mortality pool on average is going to live longer than the average American and by quite a big difference. So when an insurance company is pricing an annuity, they're using the pool of people who actually buy annuities, who tend to live longer than the average American. Got it. Um, so any sort of, any time you can join a mortality pool, and the same thing exists with pension stands. So if you work for an employer and the pension income is based on all employees and you just happen to be healthier than your average worker at that company, then you actually receive more expected value from the pension than someone who is a lower income, less healthy worker uh, who is going to not live as long in retirement. It's actually kind of a regressive policy of pension. Um, but you know, pay attention to the mortality pool that you're part of because sometimes you can get an extra bonus. That's very, very good. And um, so what's your, to sum that one up, not only is Social Security the best inflation annuity on the planet, it also has the most favorable actuarial tables for, for most, most listeners to a podcast like this, which, oh, by the way, Michael, is one of the fastest growing financial podcasts in the country because we have people like you on it. Hey, Stan the Annuity Man here. Did you like that little taste of my podcast, Fun with Annuities? Hey, if you want to see the full version, click the link and watch the whole darn thing. Remember, fun with annuities, live in the reality, not the dream.